Hey, what's going on everybody? It's the Real Joker Chad Martin here to give you my predictions for UFC Fight Night. Moreno versus Pettis coming on Saturday straight out of Mexico City on Fox Sports 1. A uh, couple housekeeping items before I get started. Appreciate all the, the comments on my, my last couple videos I've made. Um, I've, I've had some requests to do entire cards. So this is just going to be the main card and then... Uh, gonna shoot for Thursday do do the prelims so I'll put out the, the whole card starting this week and then UFC fighter pick -ems. I've been trying to make an account on the UFC fighter pick -em website I don't know if it's because I have a Chromebook or what I try it on my phone as well but every single time I, I try to make an account to submit my picks it just says sites under maintenance I, I don't know is everybody else having the same issue shoot me a Shoot me a comment and try to walk me through because I know I look relatively young, but I'm an old man when it comes to, to technology, obviously. <laughs> um, with that said, if you like my videos, give me a like. If you uh, really like them, hit that subscribe button and you'll, you'll get to see more of me. And uh, leave a comment below. You want to talk about the fight. You want to talk about other topics you, you, want, to, you want to hear me cover on on my youtube channel that being said first file on the main card we're going to get into is band weight division alejandro perez versus andre sukumtath suffering succotash that's a that's a mouthful to say sukumtath anyways uh perez he's a former tough latin america winner um he's good head movement really fast hands um Good movement on the feet. Um, I, I like his game. He's a bit of a counterfighter at heart, but he can mix it up and be aggressive uh, when he wants to force the action. Uh, Sukumtak, he's uh, a bit of a plotter on the feet. Uh, he just wads forward. He doesn't have very good head movement. He's mainly a puncher as well. He's a bit hittable on the feet. Uh, he's, he's got pretty good power. He's a tough guy. Um, most awesome thing about him, most memorable thing about him is he's a he's a good body puncher. I'm a huge fan of body punches and in fighting. And this guy, Sukumtoth, I, I've never don't recall seeing this before in all my years watching fighting. It's uh but, but he threw like ten left hooks to the body in a row, just no setup, just uh, uh, winging him like Rocky Balboa hitting meat. It was it was awesome to watch, and uh, Morales was definitely feeling it after the fight. <laughs> but um, my pick in this fight, I'm going to go Perez by decision. I think he's just a bit too fast, too athletic. Um, he fought Morales as well. Uh, another guy, he's he's going to be the shorter guy in this fight. He he used that overhand right left hook combination really well um, against Morales. I think he's going to have success with that as well against uh, Sukumtath. But uh, I think uh, Sukumtai is just a little bit too hittable, a little bit too slow. And uh, he's going he's gonna to lose the decision. In the middleweight division, we have Smiling Sam Alvey versus Sugar Rashad Evans. I don't know why this fight was made. Um, Sam Alvey, we, we've seen so many fights of his now. We pretty much know what type of guys he should fight to make exciting fights. They gotta be aggressive, come forward, because he's a counter fighter. He's looking to land that big left hand. He's got big time power. He's got good takedown defense. He's pretty solid all around fighter, but he's a counter fighter. He's not gonna initiate. He's gonna he's gonna wait for you to come forward. And then you got Sugar Rashad Evans who needs to retire. They I mean he, his nickname's Sugar, but he should be called Splendor Rashad Evans because he's just not the same. He, uh, I think his chin might be shot by now. Um, he's not as explosive as he used to be. He uh, does that thing with his hands like Shane Mosley used to do where you know he's just moving his hands around, but he's not really throwing anything. And uh, it's, uh, it's really frustrating to watch because he only throws one shot at a time and... Oh man, it's like I said, really frustrating to watch. But uh, my pick in this fight, it's going to be Sam Alvey by decision. Two guys that aren't really going to 
be aggressive and come forward. I think it's going to be a lackluster fight. Um, of course, Alvy could get a knockout because he's got such big power and, and Rashad's faded so much. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and give Rashad the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he'll initiate some wrestling um, like, like he used to. But I don't know. Injuries may have taken their toll uh, on him as well. So I don't know if uh, he'll be able to get Alvy down or keep him down. So I, I think Alvy's just too uh, younger in the sport. Uh, he's he's going to have too much power, and uh, he's uh, he's going to win decision. The featherweight division we got Martin Bravo versus Umberto Bandane. This is a interesting fight. Bravo just won the tough Latin America lightweight championship or tournament in uh, this past season. He's uh, not the most athletic guy, I'd say, but he's tenacious. He's always coming forward, always pressuring. And while he's learning the game, I think that's enough for him at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, say this is kind of a setup fight for him because Berto Bandene, he is a southpaw, so that, that can present issues for for green fighters from time to time but he's a hittable southpaw and when he gets taken down he's content staying on his back and uh getting put into bad positions so my pick in this fight i'm gonna go ahead and say that martin bravo is gonna you know stun him in the second round finish him with a choke uh rear naked choke submission round two martin bravo the welterweight division, we got Alan Jabon versus Nico Price. I really like this fight. Two exciting fighters, two action guys, bigger, bigger guys as well in the 170 pound division. Jabon, he's good everywhere. He's he's a long, rangy guy, and he fights long too. That's very important. Um, against a guy like Nico Price, who's got big-time power. Uh, Jabon showed, especially against Mike Perry, um, he can keep guys on the end of his strikes. He, he's straight punches and kicks. Um, straight strikes keep guys on the end of his combos. He's got good footwork, uh, he, good movement on the feet. He can get into firefights, but uh, I think that he's shown that he can also stick to a game plan like, like in the Mike Perry fight. Nico Price, he's uh, he's got that squared up stance on the feet, um, and he, he throws everything and every strike. Uh, he's not the fastest guy, but he's he's got big time power, and he's hittable on the feet because that squared up stance. And you know he's he's a slower guy at 170. He's, Javon's definitely going to have the speed advantage on him, but he's tough. He took a lot of shots against Alex Morano, and. Uh, I used to, used to train with, by the way. So full disclosure, I'm kind of mad at Nico Price um, landing that uppercut at the end. But he he lured him into a into a firefight, and he was the bigger, stronger guy. And that's a, he's a dangerous guy to be be trading with, and uh, that's why he got the uppercut knockout. Now it's a no contest because tested positive, I think, for weed or something. But um, in this fight, I'm gonna go ahead and. Say Alan Jabon's going to get the TKO in round three. Um, in Nico's last fight, Alex's movement was giving him big issues on the feet until he was able to kind of walk him down and corner him against the cage and lure him into, into a brawl towards the end of the round where he got the big uppercut knockout. Jabon, I, I think he his extra length, he's a longer guy than Alex. He It's going to be harder to, to corner him. Plus, he's going to be able to keep keep Nico honest because because he's a longer guy. He's going to be able to get in and out on his strikes. Nico, uh, especially when guys put together two or three punch combinations, he, he gets caught on the end of them because of that squared up stance and lack of head movement. But uh, he's gonna he's gonna try to walk walk Jabon down, but I don't think he's gonna have a lot of success. I think Jabon's gonna be disciplined, stick to the game plan, and. Uh, Man, Jabon's got some killer instinct. When he when he he has guys hurt, he loves dropping elbows on them. I think third round he's gonna he's gonna finally rock Price enough to get the finish. 
So third round, TKO, Alan Jabon. Strawweight division co-main event, we have Randa Marcos versus Alexa Grasso. Not too pleased with this co-main. I think that uh, they could have picked maybe Jabon versus Price as the co-main or Rashad Evans, Sam Alvey just due to name value, but classic striker versus grappler matchup. Marco, she's a ground gal. Um, she's got decent wrestling and uh, not much to offer on the feet, but you know she she is what she is. She's a decent decent ground game and uh, Grasso. She's a solid striker. She's got good boxing, good movement on the feet accurate precise striker and she's got decent wrestling herself so looking at this fight the question is well a couple things who's better in their respective advantage you know you got Grasso having the advantage on the feet Marco's advantage on the ground I think Grasso has a bigger edge on the feet I think Marcos is way too hittable for for Grasso and um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick Grasso by decision because I think that even if she does get taken down, I think she's got superior athleticism. She's going to be able to get back to her feet and, and minimize the damage and put the damage on Random Marcos. I don't, I don't think either girl is going to necessarily finish the other. But I, I do think that Grasso is going to do enough to get the win. Because uh, she's got such good boxing, such good movement. The main event, this one I'm excited for. Sergio Pettis versus Brandon Moreno. This is probably a number one contender fight in the light in the uh, flyweight or was it straw? <laughs> no, no, flyweight division. Um, I, I know you'd say we'll look at their rankings and you know it's not one and two fighting for number one contender or two and three or whatever. Um, Joseph Benavidez should rightfully be ranked above these guys, but look at. Everybody Mighty Mouse has fought. He's cleaned out the division. So it's time to infuse some new blood in the division. Or uh, a new contender. Some some fresh meat for him, if you will. And they're both young guys, so they're making making good improvements from fight to fight. I think they're both like 23. Um, Sergio Pettis, he's uh, got good... Good, uh, good kickboxing. He's a more traditional striker than his brother Anthony. He doesn't doesn't do the flashy stuff as much. He's de typically a one-two high kick kind of guy. Um, he's a long striker. He fights long, and uh, he doesn't have the best head movement, but he's good at moving around on the outside and staying at range. So makes up makes up for that. But he is, he is a bit hittable in the pocket. Uh, Brandon Moreno, he, he's aggressive. Loves those looping looping shots on the feet. Um, he is really good at just, you know, being a whirlwind on the, on the feet, on the ground. He's always aggressive, always coming forward. I think the X factor in, his, in this fight is his wrestling. He's always driving through takedowns. If he's up against the fence, he's locking his hands together and picking you up off the ground and slamming you. And Sergio, he plays the guillotine game a bit, defending the takedown. Um, he'll try to cinch up a guillotine and kind of concede the takedown when he should be defending it more. I think that's the big difference in this fight is Moreno, he's going to be able to control where the fight takes place. I think Sergio's going to have a slight edge on the feet. Um, Moreno is pretty hittable just because he's so aggressive, darting in and out, trying to land land his strikes. But he's going to be able to get the takedowns and eventually get the finish. I'm going to go ahead and say Moreno by submission in the third round. And the next, the next person to fight Mighty Mouse if Mighty Mouse doesn't move up to 135 after the Ray Borg fight. That's it, everybody. Once again, if you like my uh, videos, hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, please hit that subscribe button. Well, actually, even if you don't want to subscribe, just, just hit it anyway, just to humor me and give me an extra, extra view and, and like every so often. And also, leave comments below 
let me know what you think. By the way, Vintage Knight got the Ultimate Fighter shirt. Got, you recognize those two guys? I think the, the main eventers were in diapers when the first season of the Ultimate Fighter came out. So there you go, Vintage Knight. Have a good night, everybody.